Okay, so when we think about travelling to space, one of the arguments for it is that on Earth our resources are limited. Yes. We've only got one Earth to deal with, which is only uh, 10 to the 24 kilograms of stuff, and most of that's inaccessible because it's thousands of kilometres underneath us. Yep. Whereas in space, resources are unlimited, vastly more than on Earth. Yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, we could essentially say, for all intents and purposes, infinite at the rate we're talking about. But certainly billions of times more than are available on Earth. And if people think about where would you go in space, for example, to mine minerals yep. as we start running out of things to mine on Earth. Now, clearly the most stuff is you know, on Jupiter, yeah. but <laughs> trying to get into Jupiter's enormous gravity and get <laughs> out, it's not going to be sensible. That's right. Um, even, I mean, you can mine the Moon and Mars, but the Moon's smaller than Earth and it's still difficult to launch from it. The best place is actually probably the asteroid belt, yeah. where all these minerals have minimal gravity. Yep. So all those diagrams we've seen of potential wells, it takes no potential well to come out of these things. And they've already been kind of sorted out into nice little chunks. Now the amount of mass in the asteroid belt is very tiny compared to even yep. the smallest of the planets. And actually most of the mass in the asteroid belt is in, just in series yes. anyway. Um, but it's still vastly more than is accessible on Earth. Yeah, it, it, and again, as you said, billions of times more accessible. And it also just has less issues. You know, we've talked a bit about the issues around the moon and Mars and, you know, uh, legal rights. And we'll talk about this, but also cultural rights. You know, we see the moon. Should we really change the moon? We see Mars. Should we really change Mars? Astrons, you don't see the naked Nobody eye. Nobody even knows these things exist, right? And there's yeah, billions of them. Yeah. So it's uh, if we got rid of a few kilometre-sized asteroids, you know, just the catalogue number, um, it doesn't have the same protest. And of course, yeah. they are airless, godforsaken lumps of rock in the deep in space. So yeah, it's not like you're taking some pristine rainforest and turning it into a wasteland. You're taking a wasteland and dismantling it. Exactly. So you know, there, so those issues are solved. And it's also different from, say, the Moon and Mars, where, you know, the cost to go to the Moon, as we showed, were large. Mars is even worse. But those were and are kind of promoted and driven by country thumping, right? Yes. We did it. We're the best. Here, that does, that's not what people care about. The people what care about is, can you get enough resources for your country? So it's less of a we did this and more, we need to do this for the money. Yes, yeah, so this might be commercial mining corporations and we're not talking about, I suppose it still might have governments involved if it starts becoming militarily and yes. economically important. I mean, if you can uh, mine the asteroids and use it to build huge space death lasers or something I'm like that. I'm sure this, we will see it. Governments <laughs> will become very interested. <laughs> That's right, we will see an increase in funding. And so this makes asteroid mining I think very different from what we've just recently talked about with the Moon and Mars. Some of the issues are similar, some of the issues are actually easier, and some of the issues are just dramatically different. And over the next uh, section of this course, that's what we're going to dive into is what does it mean to deal with asteroid mining? What are, the, what are the asteroids? What are they made up of? How do we find them? How do we get there? What is the money involved? Because there are some reports where you always see this asteroid is worth 10 quadrillion quintillion, let's make up a number of dollars. Eh, economists might have something to say about that. Okay, so what are we going to have to talk through to look about this? So we're going to have to talk through um, the asteroids, the compositions, where they are, what they're made up of, how do we get there, how do we use them, the costs involved with getting it there, using it, and legal issues, because some of the legal issues are with the asteroids are similar to stuff on the moon, but also in some cases they're very different. Okay.